Washington University estimates that by 2030, 40% of Fortune 500 companies will no longer exist. Do you know where your stocks are? That's my question. <laughs> That's really right? a good question. Like, are, those are great questions. And yeah. here to help us answer all of, everything about innovation, artificial intelligence, and the blockchain, future. and the future is Patrick, Patrick Schwertfeger. Nice. I said it right. You did a great job. Yes. It's a long name. It's a fantastic name. It means swordsmith, right? Yeah, it does yes. in German. Yeah. No German name. Absolutely. Yes. And Beautiful. so you're going to help us like cut through the noise and help us understand help us understand about technology. You know, it's it's an exciting time, and everyone wants to talk about this for the same reason mm -hmm. that I think you're you're hosting the the uh, the show today, because there's so much change coming. Yeah. And and the see the instinct the, the real thing is that. When you hear a stat like what you opened with, 40% of businesses are going to be gone, supposedly, in 10 to 12 years. So the, the instinct is to get in a defensive posture. Mm -hmm. Like people, they don't want someone to eat their lunch, right. right? All of a sudden something's gone, their revenue's gone, their business changes, people are afraid of change. But at the same time, you know, if, those, if this happens, if 40% of these large companies disappear, the economy is not going to disappear. No. People are still going to be spending money. So if those companies disappear, these are huge companies, who's going to take their place? And that's what like, people want to know. They're, if you're going to make a statement like that, yeah. what's going to come in? Well, first they want to know who's going to disappear so I can unload them off my portfolio. <laughs> right. But the, the real Get question is who's going to who's take Who's going their to place? replace it? And I want to know why this is happening. Why does Washington University estimate this will happen? Well, it's, you know, there's, there's an acceleration, of course. And now, when, when things are digital, they progress along an exponential curve, not just a linear curve. We, you know, throughout the last 2,000 years, everything's pretty much been linear. But when things get digital, you know, it's like, it's like the digital cameras. Do you know who invented the digital camera? Kodak. Kodak invented the digital camera, but it was so clunky and so, like, pathetic, low resolution. It, wasn't, it, it didn't work well. And so they were like, let's not even worry about it. But then it goes along that exponential curve and it starts getting better really, really quick. That's why they call it disruptive innovation, because people don't see it coming, mm -hmm. right? They're not looking, it, it, it kind of, disruptive innovation usually caters to the least profitable market segment first. Mm -hmm. right? People want a cheaper, less expensive solution, right? And the, the executives are all looking for premium pricing options, because mm -hmm. that's where you make your profit. Mm -hmm. So everyone's always pushing up that price scale. Who gets left behind is these people at the bottom. Mm -hmm. Right, and that's where these digital technologies, they start getting better and better and better. It's like Smith Corona. They used to be the best typewriter company in the world, right? <laughs> How many people and they own were, a typewriter? Exactly, and that, but the, they had their, I think it was called the PS3200 or something. Mm -hmm. It was a far better device for creating documents than the IBM computers mm -hmm. at the time because it was still on DOS, right? The, mm -hmm. the word processing programs hadn't even really come mm -hmm. on board yet. So the typewriter was a better option, right? I tell my and kids they, that in high school, I took a typing class on typewriters. And they're <laughs> like, do. what's a typewriter? Exactly. You know, we're dating ourselves. <laughs> I well, Look, I, I, I took that too. I, I learned. <laughs> and my mother, my mother had a Smith Corona. Mm -hmm. And then all of a sudden, things are getting better and better and better. And before you know it, you've got this thing on your hands, which is way better than what you started with. Yeah. So, mm -hmm. so it that's, happens quick. That's interesting. That's exciting. So how do we take an offensive posture on this? Well, that, that's exactly your, your one step ahead of me as usual. So uh, people get into that defensive posture, but the opportunity is to stay on offense and mm -hmm. to say, who else's lunch can I eat, right? Mm -hmm. And so I, I often say, uh, I do a lot of events and I'm always covering this topic and I always say to look up, look down, look side to side, mm -hmm. right? You look up, that's your premium pricing. There's profit there. It's good business, right? To do premium options. Take your most expensive product and multiply the price by 10. What can you sell at that price? or what needs to be included for that to be a great deal, mm -hmm. right? Changes your mindset. Look down, that's the least profitable market segment. That's where disruptive innovation comes from, right? And so you can stay cognizant of what's going on under your feet to see if there's any threats emerging. And then look side to side, those are what I call adjacent markets, yeah. right? Those are revenue opportunities. If they start failing, if things start not going well, like what's an adjacent market? What's your biggest supplier? Who else do they sell to? That's an adjacent market. Mm -hmm. Who's your biggest customer? Who else do they buy from? That's an adjacent market. Mm. Right, so you can very quickly, you can make a list of 20 mm -hmm. adjacent markets and start saying, what are they doing badly? 
Right? Where are they shaky? Right? Those are revenue opportunities. So strategically, whether you're you know, a CEO running a company or you're an investor and you've got a portfolio to manage, you can start to look, where are the holes? Where are the opportunities? And who is adjacent to those, you know, Apple disrupted yeah. the music business, sure. That's right? right? And then the phone business and so on. Mm -hmm. These are adjacent markets, right? Mm -hmm. when, when Google gets into the automobile business, right? That's an adjacent market. Mm -hmm. Right, so fascinating. Facebook's trying to get into the ISP business with these solar-powered planes that are going to fly at 70,000 feet for months at a time, delivering internet access to the people below. That's an adjacent market, mm. right? And Google wants to do the same with their project Loon. So there's, there's tons of these examples of people getting into different mm -hmm. markets. And when you work, as I do, with a lot of the, the C-level folks, it's really, it's a game. It's a series of exercises that you can do to, to be like, okay, where are those opportunities and where are the threats likely to come from? And then you can stay on offense. This is so fascinating from a business perspective. And then also from a consumer and investor perspective, mm -hmm. a lot of our viewers are probably, they probably have some stock in a lot of yeah. these companies. Yeah. So what would be a very practical way for them to take a look at their portfolio, assess some potential threats, assess some potential adjacent markets and look for opportunities for investing? Yeah, that's a great question. So the, you know, many investors today, I, I know some are investing in individual stocks, but a lot of people are investing in these ETFs, mm -hmm. right? And there's, there's, there's a lot of advantages to ETFs because they have some built-in diversification and it's kind mm -hmm. of managed, just like, for example, the QQQ is the NASDAQ 100. That's the largest 100 companies. Well, if one company starts to fail and goes down to 120, they're off, right? Mm -hmm. And they get replaced with someone who's doing better. So it naturally, you know, refreshes itself with the best companies. Well, there's some larger, you know, like there's, for example, there's the financial index, right, which has mm -hmm. all the banks, right? And that the index right now is kind of struggling. It's, it's not going down, but it's shaky. It's not, certainly not going up, right? Meanwhile, the fintech space, which stands for financial technology, mm -hmm. is a booming part of the industry right now, which includes blockchain, which is the mm -hmm. technology behind Bitcoin, as you know. So, and that fintech uh, industry, there's a number of ETFs following it. The one that, that I have in my own portfolio, just full disclosure, is if FINX, and that's the uh, FinTech ETF. And so you, you look for these ETFs that specialize in the progressive, mm. the forward-looking, you know, robotics, there's robotics ETFs, and there's AI ETFs, right? Even in mm -hmm. the big data space. And, and in each one of these, if we had time, we could go through and say, okay, where are the leading use cases like in big data, it's all about predictive maintenance. Mm -hmm. That's the big winner, right? And in AI, there's natural language processing. That's gonna be huge in the next three to five years. Every business is gonna be communicating with their customers using automated, mm -hmm. you know, Im imagine these call centers that have 100,000 employees. They have to hire these people, maybe in the Philippines or India or where, even here in America. And you have to manage them and try and get consistency. Once the, the AI and the, the, what they call NLP, natural language processing, once it gets to a point where they've, they've passed the Turing test, where you can't mm -hmm. tell if it's a machine or if it's a person, they're going to replace all of that with a, with a, with a program. Mm -hmm. And it's going to save them a ton of money, right? And consistency will go up. They can, they can split test and optimize mm -hmm. conversations. I mean, the opportunities are huge. Yeah, there, there is a lot coming down the pipeline. The, oh we gosh. were talking about the, um, just that new Gmail interface. Yeah. It has three AI um, options where you can click on the button, which one that you want really? to respond to via email. Really? We also run a um, live chat for about 350 yeah. companies, and we frequently get a message, are you a robot? Are you a wow. robot? Everyone knows this is coming. Sure. Yeah. And we don't use robots, and so we say, no, we're not. And then, soon. and then they say, tell me a joke. <laughs> <laughs> Sure. Well, they've even done they've done studies. There was one I forget the university that did this, but they they had uh, TAs, t teachers assistants, that mm -hmm. were helping the students, and there was eight of them, and one of them was a bot, and mm -hmm. the students weren't told this, and at the end they were told one of them was a bot, and they were asked to guess which one was the bot, and they got it wrong most of them. Wow. So it, it has mm -hmm. got we are at that point. So we're you know there's text and then there's voice. So at in the text level. We're already passing mm -hmm. the Turing test now. We're flirting with it right now. Mm -hmm. The voice, it's different. So when you say, Alexa, what, you know, what temperature is it outside? Mm -hmm. She can tell you the answer to that. Mm -hmm. But if then you say, what will it be tomorrow? She can't do that. Mm -hmm. She can't add context from the first question to the second. You have to start from scratch mm -hmm. and say, Alexa, will it be warmer tomorrow than today? Then she can do it, mm -hmm. right? Mm -hmm. And so, but even now, if you say, Alexa, let's chat. 
And so now you're giving Alexa at that point the permission to, to, to try and add context. And you can play with it if you have that in your home or Google Now or whatever. Uh, and they're getting better. It's, it's turning that, that corner, that hockey stick corner. It's happening right now. Mm, it's so, so interesting. Oh my gosh, so it's exciting. T can we learn more about this in your book? <laughs> no, 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 it's a totally different topic. <laughs> So this well, is frankly, I love the title, and it sounds to me like we've got a little anarchy, anarchy going on. Here. Anarchy Inc. It's called "Profiting in a Decentralized World with Artificial Intelligence and Blockchain: How We Can Be on the Offensive." Yeah, that's exactly what it yes. is. And there, listen, we all know there's some scary things happening, mm -hmm. and this book tries to go into that. But it says, look, knowing that there's some challenges, there's also some huge opportunities. In here. And I love taking the positive approach yeah. from it, saying we understand the risks we're going to mitigate those, and we're yeah. going to be able to adapt well to our environment and our, adapt our portfolios to our environment yeah. as well. well yeah. It's business and life. This, is, this mm -hmm. is not, even though you talk about it very much from a business perspective, the truth is this, this is our life. I mean, yeah. who thought that we'd be living on our phones the way we are, right? Exactly. So mm -hmm. everything changes, it affects our life. And yeah. what choice do we have? We have to be positive, right? These are, this, yeah. is, this is the mm -hmm. time that we live in. Yeah. So there's so much we can do. We just have to stay we're on the on the right mm -hmm. side of the equation. Well, like you said, it's so. an exciting time. Yeah, it sure is. So it's very it exciting. It gives us a lot to think about. Patrick, how can people find you? And I know <laughs> you are a speaker. You're out there. You speak about this all the time. Yeah. Um, so, so what would they find you for specifically? Yeah, it's a, you know it's evolving because again, so many people want to. I'm doing put it this way. I'm doing more consulting, coaching type activities now than I used to, just because there's so many people who are trying to figure it out. Yeah. And so many people who are feeling a little bit nervous, right? But but it is true that historically I've earned, you know, 80% plus of my income as speaking fees. So that's how mm -hmm. I uh, that's how I earn my living. But the, the easiest way to get a hold of me is, is a website, bookpatrick.com. Mm -hmm. And I do that because my last name is so long and so confusing. So if you do bookpatrick, it will forward to patrickschwartfager.com. But no one can spell my last name, so it's easier to have a shorter <laughs> Bookpatrick.com. Book Patrick. I can do that. Yeah. All right. It's very nice to be here. Thank oh, you. Oh, thank you so Amy. much. Great this, so is, much. this has been so. Thank I have you for 10 million in. more questions I'm going to ask you afterwards. Okay, let's Will do it again. Will you please come back? Yeah, and, it's always and do a pleasure. I would love to be here Wonderful. again. Wonderful. Thank, thank you. you so much. And we'll be right back.